Hello everyone, welcome to God's Daily Dose, where we come together for a daily dose of God's Word. Join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be able to come together and be in your Word today. We just ask, Lord, that you lead us in spirit and give us wisdom and understanding of your Word, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, everyone, so yesterday we started in the book of Matthew in the Gospels since Jesus is the reason for the season. And so um, we want to, I wanted to be able to, for the month of December, it's December 2nd, I wanted to be in the gospel so we can hear Jesus' story. And um, so the book of Matthew, we went through the genealogy of Jesus all the way back to Abraham. And then Luke gives it all the way back to, from Abraham all the way back to Adam. Um, so today we're going to start in Luke chapter 2. I want to skip ahead just for today and read the birth of Jesus. So we have the birth of Jesus chapter 2. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So we think of the Roman world, it was pretty big. And so they're all having to go to their birthplaces um, or the place of their ancestors to register for the census. And um, he says, so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. And again here, he's... He's acknowledging that Jesus is, or Joseph is from the line of David. So he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting child. And again, he's mentioning, you know, they're not married yet, and she's already, and she's pregnant. <clears throat> so she's a virgin, um, the virgin pregnancy, right? So while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes, or sorry, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. So this angel is Gabriel. He's telling them he's bringing them good news of great joy for all the people. Not just the people of Israel, but all the people. So today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom, it, whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said, to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see the things that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. So I'm going to stop there. So that's um, Luke 2, 1 through 21. And so we're just going to kind of go through this. So he acknowledges Caesar Augustus. We notice Matthew, Matthew was more, um, his, his gospel is more structured and he refers to numbers a lot. 
But with Luke, he um, he tends to relate his um, his interest in world history. So he mentions Augustus, and by by doing so, he's also acknowledging that the Israelites or the is Israel is still under the occupation of foreign armies, and um, so they're still waiting for their Messiah and. Uh, you know, we've had silence for 400 years for after Malachi until now. And um, <clears throat> so, uh, so um, he, God sends his angel Gabriel, right? So the census here um, is... Usually, for um, they they collect everybody's um, whereabouts or whatnot for uh, for military service and taxation. And now the Jews, of course, they were exempt from military services. But God uses this decree um, of this pagan emperor Caesar Augustus to fulfill the prophecy of Micah five two. So, when you get a chance, go back and look at Micah 5, 2. And in this prophecy, the um, Bethlehem, um, the child being born in Bethlehem comes out um, from the uh, town of David, Joseph's bloodline. Um, he comes from me, God, one to rule over Israel. And his his um, and he also mentions his origins are old and ancient. And that's in Micah five two. So, with this this one scripture, Micah five two, this prophecy is being fulfilled within this this uh, testimony, right? And so, um, also when we look at the manger, it says. Um, Mary wraps him in cloth and places him in a manger. This is the only indication that Christ was born in a stable, which was also um, foretold, right? And so we have the blood lineage. We have um, the divinic covenant now fulfilled, the Abrahamic covenant now fulfilled, uh, the messianic prophecy from Isaiah. Um, and then we have a messianic prophecy from Micah. And so we're starting to see all these things take place now. But then also I want to point out, you know, as I did earlier, um, he brings good news and great joy to all. This is also showing that it's not just for the Jews. It's also going to extend out to the rest of the nations, to all of the Gentiles. And um, the angel, they go out to give the good news, right? And what is the good news? That our Savior, the Messiah, and the Lord has come. All three of these, our Savior, um, Jesus Christ being our Savior, come to save us and deliver us from sin and death. The Messiah, Him being the Son of David and Son, son of Abraham, and then our Lord, uh, the Lord, being de designated use, designated usually use. Uh, use of God or his and his anointing right so he's setting out who Jesus is already and the first thing they do is go spread the word concerning what they had heard from Gabriel so they go out and so if we think about it, these people have been waiting on the Messiah and so they're thinking that this is the Messiah who's going to deliver them from um, they think he's going to deliver them from, uh, blah, blah, blah. let me find where it's at. Not from sin and death, but from the Romans, right? Deliver them from, from the, um, the, the empire that they've been under. And he's actually coming to deliver them from sin and death though. And, um, so you can imagine they're excited as it says, they're amazed but I can imagine the Romans, you know, their emperors and them, they're being, you know, fearful of the Lord as to what is to come because they're thinking that he's going to come destroy um, them and bring the Jews out of exile, right? Or bring them 
back into um, back into rain themselves, but instead is actually the opposite. Um, and then they say, uh, glory to God in the highest heaven. You know, the, the angels themselves are praising God for the birth of Jesus. And um, so, uh, and then also Jesus, you know, it's, it's important to point out he was a Jew. So he was also circumcised on the eighth day, just like was normal for Jewish custom, right? So... Here in, in, in Luke 2, we have the birth of Jesus, and we have him um, get, fulfilling the prophecies that were foretold of his coming. So, um, tomorrow, we've got, we're going to uh, go back to Matthew. I just wanted to come back to Luke to finish up the birth of Jesus, because Jesus is the reason for the season. And, you know, we want to um, be able to know what he, what he was actually coming for right and so um i just want to give our, our daily reminder we want to fully rely on god each and every day we want to submit ourselves to him and trust in him and let him lead us and we want to uh seek first god's kingdom and his righteousness and we want to be in the word daily but we don't just want to know it we want to live it love it and obey it and we want to pray always and about everything so let me pray us out Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this word tonight, and we just pray, Lord, that you continue to work through us and allow us to live your live your word, love your word, and obey your word, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, I will see y'all tomorrow.